Hey buddies, Patel McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as China. I've been consistently spending all of my faith to get my religion re-established, but I think we're now in a position where I don't need to do that anymore. I can, I can start maybe thinking about purchasing some of these great people. I also need to start thinking about earning my uh, great works. I've kind of put that to the wayside, and it's time to start trading internationally. And what I usually do is I just organize this by gold and then look for trade. So for example, I want to trade with Hamar to improve my relationship with Norway. And I want to trade with Toronto to improve my relationship with Canada. I also want to bring my scout back to get a bit better idea of uh, Norway's empire so I can trade with higher value cities and get easier trade routes to them. I thought my capital was going to be 10 population this turn. Did some kind of disaster hit me or something? What's going on here? Wasn't this? Am I, am I crazy? Oh, what? What? <laughs> Am I crazy? I don't think I did anything in here that would lose a population. Uh, that's kind of annoying. Well, uh, since that weirdness did happen, I swear to God, I was really, really close to getting my 10 pop in here. Well, I've got six turns that I can kind of waste. I think I will go ahead and grab the university here because every great person point that I get in my capital city is going to be doubled thanks to Pingala. Oh, it might have been this river. It might have been this river because, ah, oh, because I own this tile here. Oh, that screwed me. That's where the population died because this river flooded and damaged the city. It killed a pop in my capital. I'm so upset at that. That is devastating. The good news is we are generating a decent amount of tourism already from our wonders. And these will just continue to generate more and more tourism as the game goes on. Let's go ahead and finish the... Oops, did I just remove that from the tree? Let's go ahead and finish the Temple of Artemis as well. That's going to give us a ton of housing, gold, or our housing, food, and amenities in Changsha, which is brilliant. And we also need to start thinking about, oh, I can't get the long Great Wall I wanted in here because the border popped. Damn, I was thinking of doing a Great Wall all the way from here uh, over to this city, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that anymore because you can only build Great Walls adjacent to your border. It's going to be a slightly worse Great Wall, but even so, I'll be able to fill in a Great Wall all the way along here. Well, I guess I could just put, um, watch your columns. I could just put seaside resorts here later and not worry about it. Although a great wall would be of equal value unless I get the crystal red and tour and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and start harvesting in the city of Taiwan to get these settlers just that little bit quicker. I don't think I'm building galleys anymore, am I? I've got three more turns in my galley and then I'll swap out this maritime industries card. Now I did settle on the horses, which does kind of waste the horse tile, but that's not a very big deal to me. Um, I would rather kind of have a really good city on this tile and then work my way around and do other things in this city. Like for example, I definitely want to get rid of this jungle here eventually because I do want seaside resorts going along here. I'm not going to place those pins just yet because they'll take up a bunch of the like screen real estate, but I also might want to consider doing something with colossal heads inside my empire. I just have a lot of options open to me uh, as it currently stands. Now I'm going to go, I don't think I'm ready to pick up Curator yet because I don't have any great works to benefit from that. But I do think picking up Liang and maybe plopping her down in one of my cities would be a good move. I think I'll plop her down in Chengdu for now because I can just purchase builders out of the city. Kind of wish I had done an earlier play for this area of the map. Um, I might even move Liang here to give me some loyalty because I could, I could definitely still go for the Petra and Pyramids if I settle right here, plop a governor in this city. Go for pyramids and then Petra with some builder purchasing. So I'm going to save my gold for that. I need to watch out. Norway is starting to send apostles over towards my empire to start converting me, which I do not like one bit. There's the holy site in Zhao Dong. I'm not going to bother. Well, the shrine is actually really high value here. Eight turns of production for plus six faith. Seems like a really, really good investment. But I am going to want to get the harbor up in here relatively quickly. I'm actually devastated. I, I had a crash earlier and I had to... Uh, I had to reload and I forgot to replace my canal and uh, oops, so this canal is going to be nearly 50% uh, more expensive than I had originally planned. It's still not the end of the world. I am going to want to get the uh, industrial zone in here, but I'm going to be working on the theater square once this galley is finished because it's about time. These are really, really late theater squares in all honesty. The good news is I can finally get to work in the theater square in Taiwan now that I've chopped out all the remaining settlers that I want. I'm, maybe I'll go for more later on, but I think for now I'm done settling. And that means there'll be essentially one more city going down in here and then that'll be about it. And I'll see if I can get the pyramids. I'm really, really hopeful that I can get the pyramids this game. 
the galley, second galley is complete in here. I'm going to send you on auto explore and then we'll go ahead and get to work on the theater square. The city has really, really bad production, but we will figure out a way to sort that out probably by unlocking mass production to get shipyards and then plugging in the um, double harbor adjacency card. So I'm going to want to be using my gold almost, almost exclusively to get harbors this game, at least for the foreseeable future. Okay, Harold Hardrada converted my thing. I'm going to go ahead and vote yes, because if I complete this objective, I'll get a free relic. So I'm going to put two votes into that to pass that emergency, because it would be really nice to pick up those relics. Damn, the religious emergency failed because Coupe voted it down. I hate you, Coupe. Why would you do that to me? I should have put another vote into it. It's not the end of the world. We could also get to work on the Patala Palace, um, but I really need my theater square in my capital. And so we'll go ahead and get to work on that. We will put one more turn into the university, however. Actually, tempted to chop to finish the university this turn and get that theater square online because I need to fill up these great work slots ASAP. But yeah, man, I really wanted these aqueducts. I'm kind of having to like jump around the tech tree a little bit here. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and get to work on aqueducts. Then I'll grab mass production and then head for printing so that I can get the Forbidden City. Now, let's go ahead and settle the Petra slash, slash Pyramid City. We're going to immediately grab Liang and reassign her to that new city. That'll give us the loyalty that we need. We're going to immediately get to work on the pyramids. Don't really care where they go. I'm probably going to plant down my theaters, uh, my theater square in the city right here. And there's probably a decent enough campus like right here, thanks to the reef as well. And then the city will also go ahead and grab itself a harbor later on. Not going to be the most amazing Petra slash pyramids of all time. But I think if I place both down, and go ahead and purchase myself another builder, we'll be able to get them in pretty record time here. Looks like I found an island that I could potentially settle if I check that out in the near future. We'll have to have a look there. I, oh no, I lost, no, I don't, I didn't lose Suzanne the Levanta. Why can't you move here? Hmm, interesting. Oh, you're out of movement. That makes sense. There's engineering. Machu Picchu is long gone at this point. I don't really care that much about mercenaries. I wouldn't mind plugging in a trade confederation for the extra science and culture from trading internationally. I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. I'm going to hold on to my envoys because I'm never going to get to the serenity of um, Nazca at this rate. And let's start pushing production into Petra and the pyramids using these builders right here. So we're getting these both pretty quickly, although the Petra is the one that I care the most about. Yikes. Yeah, this could potentially be a settleable area for me. Um, it might be worth my while building like a couple of range units to go clear that out. I'm going to vote for myself twice and I'm going to go ahead and vote for great writers here three times in the hopes that I can get them. God damn it. This is absolutely horrific. They just banned great writers. That's really bad for me uh, because getting great writers was like the next play I had in mind, which means I'm going to have to use faith to get all of my great writers, which I super don't want to be doing. Uh, with my faith, but it is what I have to do now. All right, let's keep inserting builders into the pyramids and the Petra. It's probably the most interesting thing going on in my empire right now. Man, I'm so mad. I'm losing so much value from all these theater squares I just finished over the next 30 turns. That's devastating. So many of them voted down great writers. Like, why? Why? Why did they vote down great writers? It doesn't make any sense. Well, there's Rome, at least. I'll be able to make friends with him. He probably has a really good... Actually, he's not having a good game right now. But at the very least, I can go ahead and get open borders with him and he'll make me pay him, but that's fine. But I can send him a delegation and start building a relationship with him. And in fact, I might even try to sell him some strategics that he wants. Yeah, I'll get nine gold per turn for him for a bit of strategics. In fact, would he be willing to buy even more? I, I think he definitely wants some strategics right now. So I'm more than happy to offer him the same again for nine gold per turn. Jesus, another withering drought over here. It's not the end of the world because these tiles are all either covered or really high food, but still. Let's go ahead and delete that pin. I'm so annoyed that I'm not going to be able to earn great rider points right now. That's that's actually going to cripple me here. Uh, well, we'll just have to adapt and overcome. I'm actually thinking that the pyramids is more important because I'll get a free builder charge out of finishing the pyramid. So I might prioritize that over other over the Petra because then I can use the extra builder charges to finish the Petra. Well, let's go ahead and pick up mass production. About now is the time. 
I'm having to jump back and forth all over the tech tree. I really want iron working to get a swordsman up because I could use a swordsman plus an archer to clear out this and maybe send a settler over there. And since my great works of writing generation has been crippled here, I think I will uh, just go ahead and start producing like an archer or two. And I'll even finish the archer I built in my capital and get this guy to head over to become a swordsman. There's iron working, so we can do that now. Brilliant. We also completed an archer in the capital that we're sending over to hopefully clear out some of the barb camps over here. Man, it really doesn't make sense to go for the amphitheater now. Maybe I'm better off just going for something like the Hagia Sophia. Or the Aya Sophia, sorry. It's worth plus eight faith. I don't really care about it though. Maybe I would be better off going for the Patala Palace in one of my other locations, like over here. 28 turns of production for a diplomatic policy slot. The diplomatic policy slots aren't terrible. It's a lot of production though. I guess if I'm blocked, I may as well just try to get as much faith as possible so I can buy more great riders. Um, that's my best, best recourse, my best action of recourse or whatever. Are you kidding me? I just lost the pyramids. Oh, that is so painful. It's not the end of the world, but man, I wanted those pyramids, especially as China. Uh, well, you know, I was, if I had to settle this earlier, I think I could have got it absolutely no problem, but uh, it is what it is. is a brilliant display. Here's Petra, beautiful. So that's going to be a useful thing to get. I might even fill this bit of land with like great walls. I'm trying to think like if I were to do a, let me see, one, two, three, I could fill this entire row here, like this entire extent of the city's furthest borders with um, great wall tiles and even loop around here to here and then continue the loop with this city all. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to settle this city and just start building a, a kind of great wall along here. And I might even might even spend a bit of gold to get that going. I still need theater squares if I'm going to generate other types of great people. Uh, but I don't really have anything else to do with my gold, so I'm just going to purchase the monument and granary in here to get the city growing and producing a little bit faster. And I will actually go ahead and buy these two mine tiles because they are going to be extremely useful. Well, there's Yosemite, easily one of the strongest wonders in the game. And the Maori have, I think... Oh, no, it was actually Kabul that settled them. Uh, definitely one of the strongest natural wonders in the game. And I could start making friends with Kabul. I don't think they're that important to me. Well, finishing the theater square in here doesn't mean a whole lot to me. I was hoping to start working theater square projects, but I got kind of, uh, I got kind of screwed on that one. I guess I'll work on the harbor and just start purchasing like a granary and a monument in here. The granary will let me grow a bit. Let's keep doing international trade routes. They're extremely valuable. 10 gold, one science, one culture is super helpful. There's exploration. Now, this is where I'm going to be changing up my government quite a bit. I'm going to be plugging in Merchant Republic. That's going to give me a 15% production boost towards districts. I'm going to be taking out the colonization card, plugging in Trade Confederation. I'm also going to be plugging in the Limes card so I can start mass producing walls because I will eventually want that. Although I'm not really under pressure to get the walls up just yet. Definitely actually want to plug in the Veterancy card so I can build harbors faster. And I'm going to want more gold as a priority. So anything that I can plug in that gives me gold is actually a huge benefit at this point in the game um, because I'm getting to the point now where I'm going to be purchasing my shipyard. So I need to save almost all my gold for that. So I guess there's not going to be a whole lot of tile purchasing for great walls. We're going to have to kind of wait that out and let it happen naturally. So let's have a look at our capital here. We have a massive food surplus. Well, I wouldn't say massive, but it's a pretty big food surplus. I don't think I'm going to stop working it until I get to 11 pop actually because I'm pretty close. Nice thing is we do have a bit of jungle over here to quickly chop out this harbor. I'm going to plop a bunch of mines here as well and try to rely on the ocean tiles to get our growth here. Now, where do I want to put the theater square in this city? That's going to dictate exactly how we do things. Probably just going to plant it like right there. And maybe think about getting a Huey to a Cali if I can in this city. It's going to be a bit of a touch and go decision though because it's a fairly expensive wonder and the AI kind of likes it and it's only a one tile Huey but even so it might be worth my while. I don't have a lot of lakes to benefit from it but I just like having wonders for adjacency and stuff like that when I'm playing as China. I just I just find it more fun to do it that way. All right brilliant there is the theater square in Guangzhou. Not that it really matters because we're not really getting full value from it. I definitely want to get the monument before I get the harbor 
because that is going to give me a significant return on investment. I need another build charge down here too to improve this woods tile. So my capital is probably going to go back to builder duty here in a minute. There is shipyards. So that now that I have shipyards unlocked, it's going to be worth my while to swing over for naval tradition to pick up double harbor adjacency. And uh, I think Chengdu is going to be the first place that I get one. Um, it doesn't have the best harbor, but it has the worst production of like most of my cities. Now I am in a monumentality golden age. So rather than hard building my settlers over in Taiwan, I could actually cancel that, get this city to work on a harbor. Well, I'll get the granary first, then go for the harbor. And I could grab myself a monumentality golden age, or I could go for a ton of gold. I think I'm going to go for monumentality here because I just get a lot of benefit from builders and settlers. And I'll sell, I'll, I'll eventually send a settler out to head over here. But for now, I can do something like purchasing a builder um, over here in Shanghai just really efficiently. And then I'll grab one in Guangzhou because I just, I just want one over here. Like trading with Hamilton to try to get a, a trading post that might let me eventually reach Arpenham. Although I will be settling a city up here. So that might be all I need to reach them. And uh, huh. let me see. Maybe faith generation is the right move for me. I could get the Hagia Sophia. I don't think that's worth it. I don't think that is worth it. I'm going to go ahead and pick up two scouts here just to try to reveal a little bit more of the map. Um, I'm pretty close to picking up cartography and that's actually going to severely increase my gold income from all the fishing tiles that I'm working. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up cartography and man, I really need to get scientific theory and I need to get siege tactics and I need to get printing. This is, and I also need industrialization. There's so many techs right now that I'm feeling the pressure to pick up that I'm kind of having to make some very difficult decisions with my tech path. Okay, Rome actually wants to be friends with me. Now that's good news. So I can finally start building relationships with people. Let's go ahead and talk to Rome and say, hey, what's up, buddy? How do you feel about declaring a friendship? Now he hates the Maori, but that's fine by me. Let's just grab an economic alliance with him for now. Not really much we can do with that until we have cartography and can actually trade with him. I'll recruit this Galileo guy, but he's not really what I want from a great scientist. I would have to wait a long ass time to get another one though. I'm getting 12 great scientist points, by the way, from this one uh, campus I have. I'm trying to see if I can find a good mountain range. There's a good one, right? I can get three mountains in a single click. Beautiful. I don't have a whole lot of jungle tiles left in my empire, but Zhao Dong might be worth building it. Um, the real problem is I want engineers to help me build it because this just takes way too long i would have to funnel a ton of builder time into this city to get this in a reasonable amount of time and then i would have to keep all this bad jungle no 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 change my mind i'm not going to go for the chichen Itza. let's talk to wilfred he tends to be fairly good about the price that he pays for diplo favor he would give me 28 gold per turn which is pretty damn good for 50 he also might buy 15 horses off me and he doesn't want chocolate. He might buy marble and silk, however, for a good price as well. Yeah, 12 gold per turn for all of those. I'm happy for that. Coupe kind of hates my guts, so I'm not going to bother trading with him. Norway is not a big fan of me, um, but they're a little upset that I have more great people. But they'll just have to get over that, I guess. I don't have anything I can really offer him except for chocolate. And he will give me 10 gold per turn for chocolates. That's pretty damn good. That's going to give me a significant boost to my income. Have another governor charge. And I think I want to pick up aquaculture on Liang. And now finally, well, let me have a look at the loyalty in here. What's the loyalty like? Yeah, the loyalty is fine in here. So let's reassign Liang over to Chengdu. And then we can start getting fisheries up in the city to make the city actually be super useful. Because right now the production is just so bad in here that I'm not really achieving anything. Now, I was thinking of having the Great Wall go from this tile, but what's the point in having it go from here? I guess I could do forest there. Yeah, I guess I could do a forest here and then have a slightly better pair of seaside resorts. Let me put those pins down to remind myself that I'm going to be doing that because this is actually something where I could mess it up. Honestly, if you just take the time to do a little bit of planning, you can really achieve a lot in your games and not kind of block your own way. And I, it's something that I tend to like devalue a lot in my own games, but I really, really shouldn't. Um, it's honestly a mistake, but I do finally have enough gold now to come into Chengdu and go ahead and purchase the shipyard and that'll bring the production up to six. Now, that's not too bad, but if I refresh that, now it's 11, thanks to the plus one production to these coastal tiles, which means we probably don't need Liang here anymore because I'm just going to be putting down fisheries. But if I can grow this into a really, really big city, I can work more and more tiles and generate a ton of gold and resources in here. 
So I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. But we basically tripled the, the production output of that city with that one single purchase, which is why it's so important to get your shipyards online, which is why I save almost all of my gold at this point of the game for shipyard purchasing. Not all who There's cartography giving us plus two gold from fishing boat improvements. It's a super good pickup tech. Um, it's going to generate you an insane amount of gold over the course of the end game. Right, we got the theater square in here. I want to get my theater squares online at the very least because that does give me points towards great artists and musicians even if I don't really have room for them just quite yet and I'm getting kind of cock blocked on writers. Um, it'll be fine. I think it's about time we reassigned Magnus away from Taiwan as well or Taiyuan. I don't know how to say that city's name and we're going to move him over to Zhao Ding. Uh, so that we can start harvesting some of this jungle because long term this jungle is not really high value for us We're gonna want to get rid of it in favor of planting down woods and um, seaside resorts There is the builder again in the capital I think I'm gonna send that up to Zhao Dang to be ready for when Magnus reappears Like in a perfect world I would be working theater square festivals in my capital right now But I can't do that for another 15 turns without losing extreme amounts of value Ooh, Babylon would be a great city-state to take suzerainty of. So I'm going to wait until I can flip my government to get double envoys in here. I might even promote a Manny or grab a Manny to be able to take control of them. That's how good they are. Time to faith purchase a settler, I reckon, to send off over here. Ooh, minus 20. Where did all this minus 20 come from? Earlier on, it wasn't nearly as bad. We'll have to see if we can explore around for a better spot. I think the loyalty situation changed over there. Should have checked that first. Oh, come on, get out of the way. Let me put my scientist there, please. Okay, that's better. Time to start plopping down fisheries. Now, what they're going to do is they're going to give this city a ton of housing and food. So this city will start to skyrocket in population. Once we have all the fisheries in place, might consider moving Pingala over here. But I might just leave the, the city the way it is. I'll just keep Liang here as a way to generate builders. Ooh, found a barbarian caravel. Let's see if we can escape that. Nope, we just happened to find a uh, quadrireme. That's unfortunate. Well... Looks like this guy's going to die if that caravel finds him again. Again, mutual open borders. Beautiful. Wonderful. In fact, I'm curious how... We actually have three tourists already. And we haven't even really started generating uh, tourism just yet. I was actually hoping to win this in a sub-200 turn game. But I don't know if that's going to be viable this game. We'll see. We'll see. I really, I really want that sub-200 turn win this game. All right, let's go ahead and activate this guy. That'll boost me all the way up through banking and get me really close to Oxford University, which I will be building in my capital right here. Mainly for the two, two great works of writing slots. That was kind of like the main objective. I was meant to generate a whole bunch of great works of writing. Fill in the city that has, you know, Pingala promoted with Curator. But I didn't even get that promotion because it wasn't worth it. The good news is I can now swap out this. I'm going to take out Caravanseries for a minute here. And I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the uh praetorium sorry not the praetorium the diplomatic league card actually i'll plug that over that yeah that works a little bit better for me that way i can preserve my caravanseries card and keep things rolling but now i can stick an envoy into babylon get two envoys straight away stick another two envoys in and take suzerainty of babylon and learn a little bit more about this continent as well as pick up a bit of science from my great works of writing in my capital Right, we can get another trade route. I think that's from Shen Yang. So we're going to go ahead and purchase the shipyard in here. It's only a small chunk of production increase, but it does also give me extra production from these uh, coastal tiles. More importantly, I can purchase another trade route in my capital to continue to skyrocket my gold income to unparalleled heights. Let's take a moment here to pick up the monument and the um, thing, and we'll also place down the theater square. But after that, we'll be going for the Huey. To a Cali once we have the monument and theater square up and running. Alrighty, so a barbarian caravel has appeared to cause me issues here. That is uh, extremely annoying um, because I don't have a way to get a unit to respond to that in a reasonable amount of time. I'm guessing there's some kind of island over here that's producing barbarians that I'm going to have to go deal with. So uh, I can't really afford to do anything in this city. Well, I will leave that harbor half built. I'm going to have to try to find a way to get some more caravels. And honestly, it might just involve um, purchasing them with gold. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do in this city. I'm gonna harvest out this harbor and then immediately start production on some uh, caravels. 
I'll need to plug in the naval production card as well to speed these up. I was hoping to use these chops on, on like infrastructure, but I need these caravels to deal with these caravels. It's just too much of a pain in the ass right now. And it looks like Canada actually cleared this area out for me. So I might be able to swing in and drop a city over there right under their nose. The hard part is going to be holding on to loyalty, but I might be able to figure out a way. We also ran into America. Hello, America. Now, America is a little bit more friendly than some of the other AIs. They won't take a friendship straight away, but they might go ahead and take open borders as well as maybe buy my spare marble off me for a good price of seven gold per turn. That's usually what you want to do when you meet an AI. You want to go ahead and trade with them. They're making a lot of tourism and culture per turn, which is very annoying. I should be able to catch up to them. I was wondering who was taking all the great people, and it looks like it was America. America took a great rider, another great rider, another great rider. So they took all the early great riders, which is a little bit upsetting, but, you know, well, I can't really do much about it. All right, I think this Merchant Confederation card has outlived its usefulness now that I have the Naval Infrastructure card, and I think Diplomatic League. Well, do I want influence or do I want gold? I think I want gold more than influence right now. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. And I might want to plug in Core V in the near future because I'm about to be building the Oxford University. So now that we have humanism... We are going to want to start working on art museums and archaeological museums. I also want to get diplomatic servers so I can get spies up. And I also need to get in this city my um, intelligence agency. So that's probably going to be right after the harbor. And I'll have to purchase upgrade that harbor. Hold on to my envoys for now. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Let's keep harvesting these less useful tiles so that we can get this caravel complete to start dealing with these barbs. And I'll also grab myself a quadrireme here pretty quick bit of a waste to do all that chopping for that but eh, what else could i do with it there's oxford university completed happy days or sorry unlocked rather not completed we can start the construction of oxford university right here i will i will actually go ahead and finish that builder to give me a bit of time to get the diplomatic service and plug in the core v card so we can build wonders faster although i do need to go ahead and pick up uh, gothic architecture first um, so that i can actually get that wonder construction card with scientific theory i think it's about time we swung back now to pick up castles and siege tactics that's going to give me culture from the um great wall and also allow me to start building walls for my tourism push that's coming up very soon also about time that we got our hands on the industrial zone of the city we've heavily delayed it and we're now getting to the point where we're going to have no choice but to go for industrialization so i need this industrial zone finished so i can get a factory to start powering all my cities it's probably going to be another industrial zone all the way over here. But this city has absolutely crap. And I mean diabolically bad uh, production. I should have probably placed these districts down earlier to make them cheaper. But, you know, I kind of wasn't paying attention. My, I have a limited, amount of, uh, a limited amount of brain space for a lot of this stuff. I think, yeah, this city's going to need production somehow. Probably will have to do gold investing in here. Chen is just not going to be super useful for a very long time. Generating a lot of gold for me at the very least. And of course, the same turn that I finished my harbor... A caravel appears out of the fog of war and pillages it. Huh, that's weird. I didn't know you could do that. I just, um, I just attacked from the sea onto land with an archer. I thought they didn't have a melee attack, but apparently, <laughs> the more you know, archers have a melee attack. Time to plug in the last fishery into Chengdu, at least the last one for the foreseeable future. I don't see anywhere else I'm going to be plugging one in, but you can look now just how much housing this city has and just how much food surplus they have. They're going to be growing really, really quickly and being able to work a ton of these specialist slots. Yeah, there you go. I just, oh, for the love of God, of course there's an archer over there. Of course there's an archer over there hiding in the fog of war, ready to kill my archer that I used to melee down a scout. <laughs> well, you learn something new every day. I'd never in the history of playing this game, attempted to melee a unit with an archer. But apparently it works. You can do it. It's not super effective, but you can do it. More trade routes available. Um, the shipyard in here is plus six. I might buy that next turn. Ooh, there's Kumasi. Now, Kumasi is a really, really damn good city-state to start getting suzerainty of. I'm going to need to plug in that Envoy card again. Ooh, catastrophic eruption. If you see a castle under fog... There's castles boosting our great walls, as well as divine right, giving us access to the Gothic architecture card. I'm going to pull out Trade Confederation for now so that I can plug in Gothic architecture. And I'm also going to be plugging out Caravan. No, I'm going to pl plug out uh, Merchant Confederation so I can plug in Diplomatic League. Then I'm going to use my envoys to put an envoy into Kumasi. And then a second one 
so that I can get Smooth Ranity, netting me some error score, but more importantly, they'll teach me more. Oh, there's empty map over here. Oh my sweet Jesus. How long is left on this era? I have so much time to potentially settle all this land over here. Oh my sweet bejesus. I'm not purchasing. Uh, I am not purchasing. <laughs> uh, let me let me try to finish that sentence. I am not purchasing uh, what you call them. Harbors. I'm purchasing caravels so I can go clear the ocean and settle this land. God damn. This is like free real estate. All right. Let's go ahead and finish diplomatic service like we were hoping for to get our spies up. Uh, let's see. Right, we've got seven turns until this era is done, so Let's get the work on the Oxford University. It's a 31 turn build. Let's see, could, could I improve any tiles in my capital to net myself a bit more production? Not really. I could probably de-emphasize food and emphasize production over food because we have plenty of surplus here. Look at this tooltip. By the way, if you want tooltips like this, these are literal god tier tooltips. Sucratax, simple, UI adjustments. Go to the Steam Workshop and type in Sucretact Simple UI Adjustments. It is literally the best mod that has ever been made for the game. I have it's it's the only mod I've ever used. CQ UI, eat your heart out. Look look at this. It tells you exactly what's happening. It's so damn good. Anyway, I'm gonna pop a mine down there. We'll be working on Oxford University next episode, and I think I'm gonna call it there. We made a decent amount of progress here. We, uh, we have discovered a lot about the world and we even discovered a little bit of uninhabited land that we might be able to get our grubby little paws on that I'm very, very excited about. I thought this was going to be a fairly standard peninsula game, but then, you know, land settling opportunities just started opening up all across the map. So we might be able to see if we can do something really interesting there. I love you all very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this series and this episode so far and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.